Street Smarts. Think you've got them? Find out now. Welcome to Street Smarts, the show where people try to prove just how brainy they are by predicting just how harebrained other people can be. <laughs> now, I've searched the sidewalks, parking lots, and the beaches of the good old USA looking for average folks who would like to test their Street Smarts by answering some simple questions. Now, it'll be up to our players today to gauge the brightness of their bulbs. And speaking of our players, let's meet them. It's Kevin. Yeah! What's up, Kevin? <laughs> and the lovely Lynn. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. Now, remember, it's all or nothing on Street Smarts. The winner keeps the dough, the loser has nothing to show. Now, let's meet the three people they'll be making snap judgments about. First up in Colorado, I met a fairy named Cecilia. <laughs> Cecilia, explain your character here at the Renaissance Festival. I am a fairy. Lovely. My name is Ariana, I am protector of the Queen Delandra. We are visiting from Avalon on this festival day, and we are here enjoying the festivities and watching these strange human creatures. And how long have you been living at your parents' house? I've been living there since I was born. <laughs> <laughs> and then I happened upon a gentleman's club where I discovered what Max did with her degree. I'm here at Amazon's Olympic Garden in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in the dressing room. Yes, I'm getting paid right now. And your name is? Uh, Max. Now, Max, how long have you been working here? Yeah, four and a half years. Now, Max, do you have any unusual talents that you do? Um, no. What can you do? Come on, you can do something. I can't do nothing but shake my ass. What's the highest level of education you completed? Masters. Masters where? Masters. University of Phoenix. Okay, all right. <laughs> Unfortunately. And what, what was your degree in? International Global Management. Okay. <laughs> Just long enough to talk to Paul in Arizona. Now, Paul, what are you doing here? Uh, working. Okay, what do you do? You help build uh, bike lifts? I help build uh, jacks for Dunwell Jacks. Yeah. Where are you originally from? New York. Mind are you Italian? Yeah. Right. What's your last name? Kudre. It's French, man. My father. My oh. father's French, man. Your father? Yeah, my mother's Italian. Your mother's Italian. <laughs> in the field, and your challenge is to guess who answered the question right. You will lock in your choices, and a correct guess will earn you $100. Very nice. All right. Okay, guys, let's get this show on the road. The first question I asked Cecilia, Max, and Paul, if you're jotting down instructions from the Kama Sutra, what kind of manual are you reading? Who knew it, guys? What do you think? Cecilia, Max, or Paul? Go ahead and go for it. Let's uh, roll your answers in there. Um. Okay, yeah. you're locked in. All right, we have a Cecilia and we got a Max. All right, so uh, Lynn, you're going with Max? Max, yeah, Max seems to, uh, <laughs> I, I can't even answer that. Okay, all right, let's take a look. <laughs> if you're jotting down instructions from the Kama Sutra, what kind of manual are you reading? Um, the Bible. The Bible, the Kama Sutra is the Bible? Word. I don't know, it's gotta be. That is the wrong answer. All right, a master's degree, that's the wrong answer. Kevin, we're going to check in with Cecilia for you, see if she can get you on the board. All right. If you're jotting down instructions from the Kama Sutra, yes. what kind of manual are you reading? Um, you're reading a Kama Sutra manual, which is usually a sex manual. And like, what's it tell you in the Kama Sutra? <laughs> Different positions for um, sexual favors and such, and it's usually pretty exciting, yeah. but I'm not flexible enough. Well, what would your favorite uh, Kama Sutra position be then? Um, I would probably be grabbing my ankles. Something like that. You are a magic fairy. I am! <laughs> that is a correct answer, Kevin. Yeah. She knew it. Nice job. A hundred bucks for you. Okay, I'm a jester. All right, next question I asked to Cecilia, Max, and Paul was, in slang, what does it mean if your panties are in a bunch? Who knew it? What do you think? Cecilia, Max, or Paul? Who knew the answer, guys? Go for it. Um, what do you think, Cecilia, Max, or Paul? And looks like we're locked in with Paul and Max. Okay, very interesting choices here. Looks like we're gonna go with uh, Max first. Let's see if we can get her bike. In slang, what does it mean if your panties are in a bunch? You're tight. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a jerk and you're a dick. Can you cuss? Right, not jazz, yes, sure. Yeah. You're Do you ever get your Do you ever get your panties in a bunch? No, because I don't wear them. <laughs> That's a correct answer. Right, there were some panties yeah. up a crack back there. Nice job, Lynn. 100 bucks for you. All right, Kevin, we're going to see uh, what Paul had to say. In slang, what does it mean if your panties are in a bunch? Uh, would that be candy panties? It would mean that you're wearing candy panties? Oh, it depends. 
Or you're wearing Depends, adult diapers. <laughs> you know, Bunch, uh, I got them all balled up, throwed in the corner because I took them off after a couple of days. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's an incorrect answer. I'm sorry, Kevin. He did not know the answer. All right, moving on to the final question of the round, guys. I asked him, what would a man use a condiment for? What would a man use a condiment for? Who knew it? What do you think, guys? You think Cecilia, Max, or Paul? And you're locked in, all right. And Kevin, you're gonna go with Cecilia? I think Cecilia knows a lot about cooking. Okay, good idea, let's take a look. <laughs> what would a man use a condiment for? Um, a condiment? <laughs> it's an after sex mint. <laughs> So they have sex and then... Uh, he has a condiment. Now, shouldn't he split it with his, his lover? Oh, yeah, of course, because, you know, after sex breath is... Woo. <laughs> it's an incorrect answer. I'm sorry, Kevin. I would have loved to know the answer. All right, Lynn, we're going to go and see if Paul can get you another 100 bucks. What would a man use a condiment for? Uh, give his old lady some uh, taste. <laughs> a taste of what? No, a little whatever the mint. I guess the mint part of the condom. Right, so it's like a, it's a mint-flavored condom? There you go. Have you ever used anything like that, a little freaky? I might have to uh, sometime. I don't know. Sounds pretty good. You asked me the question, man. <laughs> you had Paul. He got it wrong. I'm sorry. That was an incorrect answer. Paul did not know. Close. The correct answer is uh, it's, you know, you add flavor to your food, like mustard, relish, ketchup, <laughs> not a mint-flavored condom. All right, guys, let's recap the scores. Kevin, you got 100 bucks. All nice right. job. Lynn, you also have a lot. We'll use every brain cell in their body to figure out who blew it when we come back. Cheryl Ann, what's a bovine? That would be a type of instrument that's used when someone is cleaning out their toilet. You use a bovine. Yeah, like a snake. Street Smarts, it's time to say hi to our players. Let's meet Kevin. Now, Kevin, uh, tell me where you're from. I was born out in Long Island, but I grew up in Norway, so in Norway, with having dark hair, I was like the Norwegian Guido. Right, okay. And <laughs> right. well, that comes in handy. Comes in handy going to bars, picking up girls. Right. Uh, speaking Norwegian and having dark hair, it's like, very hey. nice. Very cool. Now, speaking of hair, Lynn, I understand you dye your hair every three weeks, yeah, different color. Yeah, I do. And today it's cherry bomb, and in back it's pink flamingo with some Ooh. blue streaks. Okay. <laughs> all right, maybe a little bit dye seeped in. Yeah. Okay, all right. I don't know, baby. Okay, you look great, though. All right. Hey, the fur is going to fly as we enter our next round. Who blew it? Yeah. This time we asked the same question, only two of our street scholars, one answered right, one answered wrong. Now, each time Kevin or Lynn correctly identifies which scholar blew the question, they get 200 bucks. Very nice. Now, and in this round, you can earn an extra $200 by using the dunce cap sitting in front of you guys. Okay. Here's how it works. When you hear a question you think your opponent can't answer, buzz in and dunce them. Right, if they can't answer the question, you get 200 bucks, but if they answer the question correctly, the money is theirs and you're the dunce. Now remember, you only have five seconds to answer the question, guys, and there was only one chance to dunce in the round. Now, here's the first question I asked to both Cecilia and Max, her tongue was sticking out there. Okay, first question was, what is a hermaphrodite? Oh my God, Lynn, you've been dunced right off the top. Put the cap on her, Kevin. 200 bucks on the line here, Lynn. I'm gonna question to you. What is a hermaphrodite? Um, a hermaphrodite is a person who's born with sex organs from both genders. All right, male let me and check female. with the judges. And that is a correct answer, Lynn! She got it, Kevin. 200 bucks. Throw the cap on him. Go ahead. There you go. Nice job, Lynn. All right, now, guys, the question was to okay. Cecilia and Max. Who do you think blew it of those two? Cecilia or Max? What is a hermaphrodite? Who blew it? Uh, <clears throat> okay. So who do you think blew it? Cecilia or Max? Uh, and we're locked in on, uh, okay. Oh, and, I'm, oh, we're locked in. I'm sorry, you have to go back to Cecilia. We okay. to Cecilia. Let's check and see if we can each get you 200 bucks. Cecilia, what is a hermaphrodite? A hermaphrodite? Um, I think that it, well, no, I know that's a person that has both sexes. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Both sexes? Genitalia. <laughs> they both have the male organs and the female organs. Yeah. Right. That's a correct answer from Cecilia, guys. She did not blow it. Sorry. All right, uh, looks like Max is the one who had the incorrect answer. Let's check it out. What is a hermaphrodite? Ooh, that's one of them nasty girls. Oh, my God, I just saw Jerry Springer today. <laughs> so what is one it? One of those nasty boys that dress like girls. It's like a cross-dresser? Yeah, okay. and they want to be like me, but they're not quite no. hooked up like Keith is. <laughs> Thank you, Max. You definitely blew that one. All right, guys, moving on. Here's the question I asked to Max and Paul. I asked them, what is, uh, what's a gummy worm? Who blew it? What's a gummy worm? Do you think it was either Max or Paul? And you're locked in, okay? And Kevin, you're going with Max? 
Yeah, I, I, I don't think she's gonna know. Uh, oh, she might have used a gummy bear in one of her acts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too late. You're going there. Let's check it out. <laughs> What's a gummy worm? It's um, a slimy little worm that the boys have. So it's like a slang term? It's like a private thing, but it's still slimy. You know, you know. I know. Oh, you know. I know. You know. She blew it. Nice job, Kevin. There you go. 200 bucks. I got it, yes. All right, Lynn, Max blew that one. So obviously Paul's the one who knew what a gummy worm is, Lynn, so I'm sorry. No money there for you. All right, next question uh, that I asked to Cecilia and Paul was, to go to law school, you have to take a law school admission test called the LSAT. What does LSAT stand for? All right, who blew that, guys, Cecilia or Paul? Okay, you're locked in. <laughs> you both have Paul. Lynn, you're going with Paul? Yeah, Paul does not seem to know much. All right, so let's check it out, I'm guys. <laughs> to go to law school, you have to take a law school admissions test called the LSAT. What does LSAT stand for? Law school admissions test. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he got that right, guys. You both had Paul say he blew it. He knew it. Looks like Cecilia's the one who blew it. Let's recap the score. Kevin, you got 300 bucks. Nice job. Right. Lynn, you also have $300. Think they know our street peeps. We'll see who they choose to ride when we come back. According to the song, When You Wish Upon a Star, what happens? Um, doesn't matter where you are. All your dreams will come true. <laughs> what would you wish for right now if you had one wish? I'd wish I didn't have to wear a bow. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time to grab hold of the reins and pick your pony. This time, Kevin and Lynn will each choose one of the three street scholars for the entire round and try to guess how they'll answer three questions. A correct prediction is worth $300. Yeah. All right. And to keep things interesting, we're going to leave the dunce cap in this round. Okay. Successful dunce will earn you another 300 bucks. And again, you've got five seconds to answer the question, and there's only one dunce in the round. Now, you guys are tied, and Kevin, you won the preliminary backstage, or tiebreaker backstage, so you get to go first. So, Kevin, who would you like to ride out the round? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on with uh, Paul. With Paul. Okay, yep. very interesting. Lynn, yeah, what about Paul. you? Max. You're going to go with Max. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kevin, our first question to Paul was, if you stepped on a Shih Tzu, what did you step on? You think, oh, my God. Lynn, you've been done. So Kevin, throw the cap on her. There we go, Please. Lynn. 300 bucks at stake. Question to you. If you stepped on a Shih Tzu, what did you step on? A dog. That's a correct answer. Way to go, Lynn. Three dollars for you. Kevin, you're the dunce. Put the cap on him. All right, Kevin. Question was to Paul. Do you think Paul got that right or wrong? What do you think? Paul got um, that? Wrong. Paul got it wrong. Let's yep. check it out. If you stepped on a Shih Tzu, what did you step on? That little puppy doggy, man. A little Shih Tzu dog. Yeah. <laughs> do you like little dogs like that? No. What are they good for? I'm stepping on. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got it right, Kevin. You thought you'd get it wrong. No money there. All right, Lynn. Okay. First question to Max was, who is Spacely Sprocket's most famous employee? Think she got that right or wrong? <laughs> wrong. She got it wrong? Yeah, definitely wrong. I don't even know the answer right. to that, so okay. there's no way she knows. <laughs> All right. Let's take it out. Who is Spacely Sprocket's most famous employee? George Jetson. You watch the Jetsons. Watch the Jetsons? Watch the Jetsons? <laughs> yep. And what did he. Yeah. And what did, yeah. I'm running your show, huh? Let me take the mic. Okay, All right. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> that was the correct answer. I'm sorry, Len. She actually oh, knew. No. She knew that, but what was that girl doing in the background is what I want to know. All right. Okay, I couldn't see that in the club. Okay. All right. Next question, Kevin, to Paul was Where could I find the Lincoln Memorial? Do you think Paul got that right or wrong? Right. You got it right? I think he got that right because he knows his war stuff. Okay, let's check it out. Where could I find the Lincoln Memorial? In the park. In the park? What park? Lincoln Park, man. Where is that? In New York, man. Okay. It's in the Lincoln <laughs> Memorial. Hey, hey. It's an incorrect answer, Kevin. I'm sorry. You thought you'd get it right. You did not get it. Okay, okay. Lincoln Memorial, uh, you can find it across from the Washington Monument in Washington, uh, D.C. There you go, yeah. Look at that okay, nation's okay, capital. Okay. All right. Next question to Max Lynn was I asked her, what would you do with a Klondike bar? Do you think she got that right or wrong? Oh. <laughs> 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 right. She got it right? I think she knows to uh, eat it. Okay, let's check it out. <laughs> what would you do with a Klondike bar? 
Oh, why you ask me that? Why? What? Eat it. Okay. <laughs> nothing wrong with me asking you that. Eat it. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. I just like the way you say, eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Correct prediction. Way to go, Lynn. <laughs> Come and the drawers on that. Way to go, Lynn. All right, Kevin. Next question to Paul was, on, Paul. according to superstition, what will happen if you pull a gray hair out of your head? Think you got that right or wrong? Wrong, he's got too many grays, gray hairs. All right, let's see if There's you're no right. He's 300 bucks. Right. According to superstition, what will happen if you pull a gray hair out of your head? Grow two more. <laughs> now you have a few gray hairs, you ever tried plucking them? Yeah, that's why, yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and they all grow in gray? Yeah, I leave them alone now. <laughs> okay. That's your correct answer, Kevin, oh, I'm sorry, oh, buddy. You were right okay. there, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, last question to Max, Lynn, was I asked Max, in slang terms, what are you doing if you are burning the candle at both ends? Do you think she got that right or wrong? Oh. <laughs> wrong. She got it wrong? Yeah, All she right, got let's, it wrong. Let's find out. <laughs> In slang terms, what does it mean if you're burning the candle at both ends? You're hanging yourself. You're hanging yourself? You're hanging yourself. You're hung. Okay. Well, thank you, I am. <laughs> Nasty boy. She got it wrong. Nice job. You're work hard. You're working hard all day, staying up late, you're exhausted. You're doing too many things at once. I know what that's like. All right, so let's recap the scores here. Uh, wow, Lynn, you got 1,200 bucks. Thank you. Kevin, you're a little behind, 300 bucks. Don't worry. When we return, Kevin and Lynn will be making a final prediction on a question we asked Cecilia, Max, and Paul. They'll each choose one of the street scholars, predict whether they'll get it right or wrong, and make their last wager. Here's a question I asked all three. If you're a cannibal, what do you like to eat? Yeah, stay tuned because next up on the startling conclusion of Street Smarts is... The Wager of Death. Don't go away! <laughs> Welcome back. It's do or die time as we enter our final round of The Wager of Death. Oh, right. Kevin and Lynn, here's the story. During the break, each of you secretly chose one of the three people out on the street, secretly made a prediction as to whether they were right or wrong, and secretly wagered an amount of money not to exceed the total you now have. Let's recap the scores. Kevin, you got 300 bucks. Yes! Lynn, you have 1,200 bucks. Oh. Now here's the question I asked Cecilia, Max, and Paul. If you're a cannibal, what do you like to eat? Okay, so Kevin, let's get your choice. Who do you want to see? I'm gonna go with... You want with Cecilia, Cecilia. Yeah. okay. And Lynn, how about you? Uh, go with oh. Paul, all right. All right, well, nobody picked Max, so we have to regrettingly say goodbye to Max. Bye, Max. Bye, I'll remember Max. those days forever. All right, yeah, well. Okay, so, uh, Kevin, we're gonna take a look at Cecilia's clip now. If you are a cannibal, what do you like to eat? Humans. Humans. I'm a cannibal, I like to eat humans. Fairies eat humans? Especially the men kind. Let people make up their own joke at home for that one. <laughs> that is a correct answer. She got that right. Cecilia knew it was people. Kevin, what did you say Cecilia would do? Say it right or wrong. Uh, you said you yes! get it right, very nice. How much are you gonna add to your three hundred dollars? How much are you gonna add? Flip it over, and you have now all of it. You went for all of it. He's got six hundred bucks. Yes! All right, now this thing isn't over yet. Now, Lynn, we're gonna see how Paul answered her. No, leave it there. We're gonna see Paul's clip first. Paul, if you are a cannibal, what do you like to eat? Human meat. Are you a cannibal? Nah. No. All right, Paul also got it right, Lynn. Now, uh, let's see what you said. Did you say he would get it right or wrong? Right. You said he'd get it right. How much are you gonna add to your 1,200 bucks, Lynn? Flip it over and show me. She played it safe, 100 bucks. She's got $1,300. Lynn wins. I don't know why Kevin's celebrating. Lynn, way to go. You're the king of the streets. Kevin, thanks for playing. We'll see you next time, folks, on Street Smarts. People who eat people.